Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, and today we discuss the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ. This goes hand in hand with the dogma of the perpetual virginity of Mary, that Our Lady was virginal before, during, and after the birth of Jesus Christ. This is a dogma proclaimed at the Lateran Council, confirmed by Pope Martin I in 649, and later confirmed by another ecumenical council. Mary's the perfect virgin. That means she's virginal before the birth of Jesus. And we know that in Isaiah, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. We know that that's fulfilled with Our Lady, uh, as confirmed in Luke and Matthew, with Mary's yes to bring the world its Redeemer. Uh, scripture says the virgin's name was Mary. The dialogue between the Archangel Gabriel and Our Lady, Mary says, How will this be since I know not man? A reference not only to the fact that she has not yet had relations with a man, but a permanent disposition. I know not man. Uh, like someone offering you a cigarette and you respond, No, thank you. I don't smoke. That's not simply saying, I don't want to smoke now. It's saying, as a permanent disposition, I don't smoke. That's the context of our lady saying, I know not man. Look, when God the Father created the mother, created the Blessed Virgin Mary, it's his creating best, second only to the humanity of Jesus, the sacred humanity of Jesus. Mary is God's masterpiece. So he's going to create her as both perfect mother and as perfect virgin. This is why Pope Martin I confirms that Mary's virginal during the birth of Jesus and after the birth of Jesus. Now let's deal with those two separately. During the birth of Jesus, it is the teaching of the fathers of the church and also of the magisterium of the Catholic Church, the papal authority and the conciliar authority of the Catholic Church, that Mary gave birth to Jesus in a miraculous manner. That is, without any violation to Mary's virginal integrity. Uh, the tome of St. Leo in 450, uh, Saint Leo, Pope St. Leo says, Mary uh, gave birth to Jesus in the same virginal manner in, with, in which Mary conceived. It was untouched. Uh, the fathers used to call it virginitas intactu, her physical virginity intact. The image of the fathers of the church was as light passes through glass without harming the glass, so too Jesus exits the womb of Mary in a miraculous fashion. Many of the fathers also uh, paralleled how Jesus left the sealed tomb in a supernatural fashion after the resurrection uh, as a similar mode to as Jesus exits, exits the sealed womb of Mary. Now, uh, let me read to you from the Catechism of the Council of Trent, uh, typically previously known as the Roman Catechism. It states, For in a wonderful way, beyond expression or conception, He, Jesus, is born of His mother without any diminution of her maternal virginity. As He afterwards went forth from the sepulchre, while it was closed and sealed, and entered the room in which His disciples were assembled, although the doors were closed, John 20, 19, or not to depart from natural events, which we witness every day, as the rays of the sun penetrate the substance of glass without breaking or injuring it in the least, so, but in a more incomprehensible manner, did Jesus Christ come forth from his mother's womb without injury to her maternal virginity. To Eve it was said, In pain you shall bring forth children. Genesis 3.16 Mary was exempt from this law. For preserving her virginal her virginal integrity inviolate, she brought forth Jesus, the Son of God, without experiencing, as we have already said, any physical suffering. So, you might ask, why? And, and again, this is the teachings of the Church. Pius XII in 1943 refers to the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ. The Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, also in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 499, speaks about how in the very act of birthing, Mary did not, Jesus did not diminish his mother's virginal integrity, but sanctified it. So, it's a truth of the faith. The question is, why? Why would God use a miracle to preserve Mary's physical integrity? 
because her physical integrity is a manifestation, it's an indication of her perfect interior virginity, her virginity of the heart. Uh, look at John Paul's fantastic theology of the body. He speaks about this, that the body expresses the person. Well, in this case, Mary's physical virginity is a manifestation, a concrete sign of her perfect interior virginity. Look, my friends, when God becomes man, you have to expect exceptions. When one woman is going to be perfect mother and perfect virgin, you have to expect exceptions. But if we can believe the miracle of God becoming man, it's a short order belief to believe that Mary brought forth Jesus in a miraculous fashion. It's, it's the teachings of the magisterium. It's also the consistent teachings of the mystical tradition of the church. Now, within this context, we also realize that Mary had no pain in labor because that was an effect of the fall. The Immaculate Conception would not experience the sufferings that would come from the fall as she was exempt. Also, it's important to remember that Mary had no children after the birth of Jesus. It is a understandable, although uh, it's a sola scriptura error, it's a scripture alone mistake when we take the reference in scripture to the brothers of Jesus and apply them to a, to a blood brother relationship with Jesus. My gosh, we, don't, we do this all the time in the sense of saying, uh, of using metaphorical and uh, uh, analogous understandings of brothers. Brothers and sisters in Jesus. Brothers and sisters of a fraternity or sorority. Uh, Jesus himself says, who is my mother? Who are my brothers and sisters? Those who do the will of God are sister, brother, mother to me. Well, obviously he can't be talking about blood relation. He's talking about the spiritual relationship of discipleship. So, when in the New Testament there's reference to the brothers of Jesus, that Greek word is adelphos. Adelphos means brother, cousin, near relative, or even kinsman. Someone from your hometown could be called an adelphos. We have the same uh, use of the word in the Old Testament, even in the Hebrew, ach, which means brother, cousin, near relative. And in context, where it appears in the Old Testament, it can't possibly mean blood brother. Jacob and Laban are called Ach, uh, brothers. But we know that the relationship is a relationship of nephew and uncle, not, and cousin references, not a reference of uh, a blood brother. So, the brethren of the Lord uh, that are made reference to in the New Testament do not take away Mary's perpetual virginity. Look at the cross. Let's go to Calvary. Jesus says to John, Behold your mother. Now, that would be a domestic or relational, a familial blasphemy if Jesus had true brothers. If he had blood brothers, he could never give Mary to a disciple in the rejection of the code of family honor. No, she's the perfect perpetual virgin. She's virginal before because the fruit of her womb is of the Holy Spirit. She's virginal during because it's a miraculous birth that brings forth the Savior and protects Mary's perfect virginity. Using a G.K. Chesterton for what else could it mean when the church says Mary's virginal during the birth? It can't mean that the church has to make a pronouncement that Mary's not having relations while she's giving birth. That would be absurd and, and also blasphemous. No, she's virginal before, during, and after the birth of Jesus because she would be the exemplar of a human person in freedom, giving the gift of body entirely back to God in virtue of discipleship and in virtue of perfect imitation of Jesus. It's something to rejoice in. It's something to have awe in that the perfect and perpetual virgin brings us the Savior and then becomes the co-redemptrix with and under the Savior of humanity. So, it's seasons of Christmas, but also year-round we should proclaim and defend Our Lady's perpetual virginity. Virginal during, virginal before, virginal after. Such is God's masterpiece in the person of our blessed Immaculate Mother. This is Mark Mirvali with Mary Pass saying thank you and God bless.